So if Allah has given the power to speak, if I try and say, oh, I don't, Allah will take away this power. Allah will take away the power of mind to speak. The least you can do is curse in your heart. And today the non-Muslims are saying, leave aside Zak and Nang, the majority of the non-Muslims today, according to a survey done by University of Chicago in USA, they say that George Bush is number one. And if you go on the internet, there are statements, I'm not saying right or wrong. They say that what happened on 11th of September, it was an inside job. Some of the theories say that George Bush did it himself. <laughs> Regarding a question, how should the Muslims behave? See what happened after 7th of July in London. There was a bomb blast. All the Muslim, most of the Muslim scholars in USA, they got together and they condemned it. In UK, they did the same. I wouldn't like to name them. I know many of them. They condemned what happened on 11th September in New York. is haram. It is wrong. We condemn it. What happened on 7th of July in London? More than 50 people died. On 11th September, more than 3,000 people died. We condemn it. Full stop. See, what they said is right. I don't disagree. Quran clearly says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. I also too condemn. If more than 3,000 innocent people have died in the World Trade Center on the 11th of September, it has to be condemned. If more than 50 innocent people died in London, it has to be condemned. But don't put a full stop. I also condemn that thousands of people that have died in Afghanistan have to be condemned. The thousands of people that died in Iraq have to be condemned. The thousands of people that have been butchered in Bosnia have to be condemned. The people that have been killed in the land of Palestine have to be condemned. Why are we afraid? <laughs> but when I ask the American, he tells me, no, you know America is a different. If we speak too much, we'll have problem. I said, why? America is a country of freedom of speech. What are you afraid of? <laughs> I speak in India. People who know Bombay, the situation of Bombay is very bad. At least in America and London, you can speak and get through. You know, people say that, Zahir, don't you get death threats? This is part and parcel of my profession. It's part and parcel of my profession. Didn't the prophets get death threats? We are following in the footsteps of the prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to protect us. But speak the truth, but speak with hikmah. So if we have to speak, if we condemn, we condemn killing innocent people is wrong. We agree that what happened when more than 3,000 people on 11 September was killed, it's wrong. We condemn what happened in London is wrong. But we also condemn the other atrocities done. When a person straps a bomb and blows himself up and kills 20, 30 innocent people, he is called as a terrorist. But when a person throws a bomb from a plane and kills thousands of Afghanis, he is called as a brave American soldier. What bravery is it? In Hindi we say chudiyan pe away. What bravery is it? From top you are putting bombs. That also it blows into another 50 bombs. So we should know that Islam is a religion of truth. And I started my talk and I end the answer of this also with the same quotation of Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 81 which says وَقُلْ جَعَ الْحَقَّ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ قَانَ الزَّوْكَ When truth is heard like in falsehood, Falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. We continue on with the session. The fire of faith igniting the same fires in you. The next question from the brother on my level. Uh, my name is Naman. I work in the field of internet travel and marketing. My question revolves around the strongest form of media today is movies. Movies originating from Hollywood, Bollywood, Lollywood and probably now Dollywood in Dubai. <laughs> Fortunately for their benefit, it gets the message across in many forms. Passion of the Christ was one form that related a story about Jesus Christ. It was, the script was in Hebrew. I wanted to first ask how much of that was uh, um, in line with what Christianity preaches and how much we can relate to Quran as well. Obviously, there are some deviations as well. But again, the masses took that understanding and absorbed it, and that's what their understanding is. So my second part to the question is, how can we use the media in form of movies 
to effectively communicate the message of Islam, like it was done in the form of the first movie called The Message, from which I understood a lot of people converted to Islam after watching that movie. Jazakallah. Because there's a question that movies do play an important role in creating opinions and conveying the message. Hollywood, Bollywood, now you have Dollywood. Dollywood, new word that's come from Dubai Media City. And you give the example of Passion of Christ, what are my views of such movies. Brother, I haven't seen that movie Passion of Christ, though I wanted to see it. I haven't seen that movie. Normally I don't see movies. But this being a particular movie, I wanted to see it. But I read reports that after this movie was made by Mel Gibson, the way he portrays and he kept it in the original language, there were a lot of criticism and the way he created it and which was slightly against the Jewish lobby. Because of that, there was a hue and cry. But it also became popular in the negative sense. When you speak something negative, it became a box office. So there it did break the records. He was walking on the edge of the sword. He invested so much money. If it went a flop, he would lose millions of dollars. It went a hit. And it had many things which were right. Many things would agree with the Islamic point of view. Many would not agree with the Islamic point of view. As far as the second question is concerned on message, and I've seen that movie, Message, made by Mustafa Akkad. And Anthony Quinn was acting as Hamza. I love you, with him. The way the movies are made was excellent. I really appreciate it. One of the best movies on the Islamic line, I would say, is The Message. Alhamdulillah, without showing the hero, without showing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without showing his picture, without showing his voice, Alhamdulillah, the whole picture was revolving around the hero, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without showing his picture, without his voice, once they show his camel and his staff, that's it. But the way the angle of the camera was, that to show that the Prophet did not like and he turned his face away, then the angle of the camera changes. So the direction was superb. It was a masterpiece. And we do require such more movies, but the budgets of these movies are big. It runs into millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. So the budget is there. But it did make a lot of money, Mustafa Khan. Then he made another film, called as Umar Mukhtar, talking about not 100% Islam, but talking about a Muslim, which also did create a box office and all. We do require such movies, but we see to it that whatever you create, it should be aligned on Islam, Quran and Sharia. There was something which I don't agree, everything of message is right. As a whole, it was good. There were things which were wrong also in the message movie, but as a whole, it was good. As a whole, it was good. What we have to do that we have to create online of the Islamic Sharia without breaking any laws of the Quran, the Sahih Hadith and portray it in a way, same way, not only movies, we have to make docudramas, we have to make serials, we have to make documentaries. Because in the media, it is a white elephant, white elephant. You know, if you know about Kon Baninga Kurupati, it was a copy of who wants to be a millionaire. On an average, they spend one million dollar, more than four crore rupees only on one episode. One episode only. 45 to 50 minutes in Bombay, where labor is cheap. Pramita Bachchan is expensive. <laughs> so the thing is there that the budget is there. Surely those people of philanthropists would like to sponsor such. They should sponsor such films and make such films so that we can convey the message. But I yet believe. The new movie that has been made, The Kingdom of Heaven, it was made by a very famous director and he portrayed the incidents, how the crusaders attack and they kill thousands of people and then Salahuddin, the hero, he comes and he showed us a hero. There was a big hue and cry in the western media that how could he make such a film. He's a Christian. He only portrayed what was fact in history. But it did not go down the throat of the Westerners. There was a big hue and cry. But because the person was a very famous director, Alhamdulillah, it did not do much damage. But if a non-Muslim makes such film, The Kingdom of Heaven, that film also I did not see, but I read the reports, that it did a marvelous job. It conveyed the true picture to a great extent. So such films should be encouraged. Hope that answers the question.